Hi, this is Dave Forrest for Full 52 Productions with another uh, free effect. Uh, so we start with a shuffled uh, deck. The spectator can shuffle these. And I'm going to remove uh, two cards. Let's see, we'll take um, yeah, this one here and this one right here. Okay, so two cards, just like so, and uh, you would invite a spectator to cut the pack into three piles. So they uh, genuinely cut anywhere they like in a deck that they shuffled themselves. So at this point you show them that, of course, uh, that the two cards you remove are the two jacks, and you explain that the reason you uh, remove these jacks is because they are experts at locating selected cards in the pack, and, and in fact you'll demonstrate that now uh, with the chosen cards. So um, we'll take the uh, cards that were cut to here and we'll have a look at what they are. We've got a four of spades, ten of diamonds and a three of hearts. Uh, three choices of course uh, and we'll take them and lose them individually back into the pack and uh, three different places inside uh, the pack just like so. The last one here we'll put sort of roughly halfway down I suppose we'll give it you know, a couple of cuts, uh, just like so. I right, can even give it a shuffle, I suppose, just in case anyone uh, doesn't trust you. All right, so shuffle deck, three cards, and uh, here's the idea. The jacks, uh, I'm just going to place on top of the pack, just like this. Then I'm going to snap, and when I snap, one card, amazing as it may seem, jumps up in between the jacks. That card is the uh, Four of Spades, which was uh, one of the selections over here, but it's not just a selected card. See, uh, this person's card also tells us that one, two, three, four cards away, we find uh, the Three of Hearts, which was another one of the selected cards. doesn't stop there, though, because uh, just a snap like this, and uh, that four changes miraculously into the final selection. The Ten of Diamonds, and um, yeah, that is that. Okay, so here is the explanation uh, for Transformer 2. Um, uh, this is uh, basically a sleight of hand version of an effect that was on my Trio DVD. Uh, the Trio DVD, of course, comes with a gaffed card, uh, which made this effect cleaner, certainly, uh, more. Uh, impressive change at the end, but basically it's a way to duplicate that um, three uh, triple selection effect from Trio with regular cards. So it is a genuinely shuffled deck, so you start with uh, having the spectator shuffle perhaps, and ideally you have three spectators. So all you're going to do is you're going to run through and you're going to cut a four to the rear of the pack. There's a four right there, so I'm just going to cut that card to the back of the pack. And now what I'm going to do is remove any sort of uh, uh, two cards, so court cards are probably best. In this case, we'll use uh, red kings. All right, so this is all done as you sort of suggesting. I'm just take a few cards out, don't show these, uh, place them down on the table. Now you can uh, shuffle them again at this point, just leave that four at the back and um, and let a spectator cut this pack into three piles. All right, mm, just like so. All right. And now you want to draw attention to these two cards because what you need here is time misdirection. Two of these are free choices because they were freely cut, but this one is the top card of the pack and you want them to forget about that. So you're actually forcing uh, the four on someone here, okay? So the way you um, misdirect there is just by showing these two cards. See, these two, uh, the two red kings is what I've removed because they're experts at finding selections and, and I'll prove that to you now using these three uh, cards that you randomly cut to. And uh, it's quite a bold force, it has uh, similarities to the cross-cut force and the, the fact that it does need a little bit of time misdirection, but it genuinely does fly and it's a, a nice way to force one card um, when when you can have multiple cards selected but only one of them has to be forced. Um, so that's good uh, in those circumstances. Um, so anyway, let's get on. So we, we have a look at these cards, of course one of them, one of them will be your force card. And, uh, and that's fine. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this uh, the, the four back first. So you wouldn't see these ordinarily, you have to know who gets the four, but that's easy enough because you know where it is. So you take that person's card back first, so the four is going to be controlled uh, back to the top of the pack in whichever uh, fashion you like. You know, just get it up, the double cut, double undercut will do it. Uh, the next card, exact same thing, it's going to get controlled to the top. Um, above the four, so you've got spectator is one card, uh, spectator one's card. Sorry, the four, 
with Spectator 2's card uh, up above it. Now what you're going to do is you're going to use tilt, you're going to push over four cards like this and take a break and then you're going to tilt the third person's card under these four. So it's actually going in fifth position from the top. All right. So you've got Spectator 2's card here, Spectator is one, Spectator 1's card and that's the one you forced, the four. And then if you go down to the fifth card here you'll find the third spectator's card okay and you can give that false cuts and such things um, you know to, to suggest that the deck is mixed um, and now what you're going to do is take a break under those top two cards all right that's two selections and you're going to place the kings on top and do the standard sandwich move that i've picked up i'm going to pick up all four cards peel the first one over now i'm of course trapping two cards in between there but you do it like this you say i'll uh, take the kings here like this i'll place them on top of the pack and you keep a break below those four cards, snap your fingers, and then you're going to pull the top card and the bottom card so it appears like a, a card has appeared in between the two kings. Of course, it's a double, alright? But if you have four cards like this and you peel the top one and then the fingers underneath pull the bottom card, then you get this uh, double and perfect registration uh, in between the two kings. You want to out jog that double like so and then turn the whole packet over where uh, the four will come into view, which is one of the spectator's cards. Clip the double and take it out. Keep a break beneath it. Okay, and say so the kings have found your card uh, and indicate the first spectator. Turn that double down and push off the top card only. This is a spectator two's card here, okay? And it goes um, on the table. The idea being that's still the four that's in there. And you see, but the four uh, doesn't. Uh, they didn't just find the four, the four actually tells us something. It tells us that four cards away, one, two, three, four, and this will be the ace, right, because you put it in fifth position, and you've taken one away in one, two, three, four, okay, that's why you forced a four, will be uh, the next selection. Now, it's probably a good idea just to put these away, because you want this final image to be just that card transforming, so you've found uh, the first card, you've found the second card, uh, by counting down to it using the value of, of the first spectator's card and the third spectator's card you say is uh, actually transforms from the four into the third um, into the second spectator's card and you have found all three cards uh, using the kings and um, yeah it's a nice sort of transformation effect that is called transformer 